Dear students, now we are going to discuss about divergence of a vector and its properties. Divergence of a vector is a scalar. That means input for the divergence is a vector quantity. This will result in terms of scalar quantity. Scalar means it has only the magnitude. The divergence is going to measure how much the field emerges or diverges from the point. So it's going to measure only the amount of field emerging from the point. It does not represent the direction of the field. Okay. So here, this is the definition of the divergence of your vector field. The divergence of your vector at a given point P is the outward flex per unit volume as the volume shrinks about the point P. So here this is the important point here for the divergence. Divergence represents what? Outward flex per unit volume as the volume shrinks. So here we can consider one example balloon. Okay, there is a balloon which is full of air. So the balloon is having the air, full of air. So now the whole balloon is represented as a volume. Now I am going to open this part. So whenever I am going to open that balloon, what will happen? So all the air is going out. It's going out through this way and spreads everywhere. That is outward flex per unit volume as the volume shrinks. So while the air going out, the volume of this balloon starts to shrink. Okay, so that is the meaning of this. So outward flex per unit volume as the volume shrinks about that point P. So this can be represented like this. Divergence of A vector is equal to del dot A. So here this dot represents the divergence operation. So del dot A vector that is equal to limit del V that is the volume. Unit volume we said right. So whenever we can consider that as tends to 0. At that time it is the ratio of closed integral surface integral of A dot ds divided by del V. So here this is unit volume and this is nothing but that outward flux. So that is the ratio of net outward flux per unit volume. So out of this unit volume how much outward flux is going out, spreading out. Okay. So this is the general definition for this divergence. Okay. So next. There are different types of divergence available. There are three types we can say. First one is positive divergence. Next one is negative divergence. Third one is zero divergence. So what is positive divergence? So for this positive divergence we can consider that balloon example. Okay. So from the point P. So how the air is going or spreading out everywhere. So that is what positive divergence at that time this point P is considered as a source point because it can generate the field outward flux from this. So next one negative divergence. So in this negative divergence all the field flux lines are coming towards that point. So here this point can act as a sink point. So this is negative divergence and the third type is zero divergence zero means this is a point we can consider some charges are coming like this some flex lines are coming and the lines are passing this point the same velocity in the same direction then there is no effect on this point so at that time this point can be neither source nor sink. So this is called zero divergence. 
So next, how are we going to represent the divergence in three different types of coordinate system? Let's start with the rectangular coordinate system. Rectangular coordinate system means x, y, z. So divergence of a vector field is a scalar. Scalar means it does not have any direction. Okay. So del dot a vector is equal to dou ax by dou x plus dou ay by dou y plus dou az by dou z. This is for rectangular coordinate system. So likewise for cylindrical coordinate system the divergence can be written like this del dot a vector is equal to 1 by rho dou this is rho actually okay so keep it mind so this is actually rho into a rho okay so 1 by rho dou into rho a rho divided by dou rho plus 1 by rho dou a phi by dou phi plus dou a z by dou z okay so this is for cylindrical coordinate system so likewise we are having this divergence for spherical coordinates also so del dot a vector is equal to 1 by r squared dou by dou r r squared into a r plus 1 by r sin theta dot dou a theta sin theta divided by dou theta plus 1 by r sin theta dou a phi by dou phi. So derivation for each coordinate is a separate part. Okay. So you have to just remember the formula. Okay. So to solve some problems. So this three Divergent formulas are very very important to solve problems in electromagnetics. Then the next one is properties of the divergence. So this is very important property here. A vector whose divergence is zero is called solenoidal. Okay. A vector whose divergence is zero is called solenoidal. That is the divergence of any vector is equal to 0 means it is a solenoidal coil. Okay. So next del dot a vector plus b vector is equal to just like our distributive law. So del dot a vector plus del dot b vector. Suppose del dot of del a gradient that is divergence of gradient of a scalar value is equal to del square a. Del dot of a vector into b vector means this is the formula. We have to write down a vector into del dot b vector plus b vector into del dot a vector. Okay. So, this are the important properties of the divergence. So, this property is very important. So, based on that we can solve some problems. Okay. And one more concept here. So, a vector whose divergence is 0 is called solenoidal. Right. So, for example, solenoidal means what? So, this is what a solenoidal we can represent like this. Okay. So that is a core inside this is what a solenoidal coil. So solenoidal it's mainly for the magnetic field induction. It is mainly for magnetic field induction. So divergence means what? Divergence represents the outward flux. Outward flux. It is divergence. It is not a closed loop of that flux. But here this solenoidal is having the closed loop. The flux lines are formed like this closed one. So obviously so when it is a closed one, the divergence is equal to 0. So divergence means it is a outward flex, right? So it is not a closed loop. But for this solenoidal, so all the flex lines are linking like this. Correct. So it is a closed loop. So divergence of a solenoid is always 0. Okay. So these properties are very, very important. And we can use this to solve some problems.